Hey, it's Jay. Just wanted to record a quick video. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, something I've been thinking about recently in my work with some others. And it's, uh, it's why do implementations fail? Um, this comes from a conversation I had recently with um, a colleague. And we all know that a lot of uh, hol holacracy implementations don't go so well, or um, self-management in general, that the, it's really easy for things to kind of slip backwards. And I think a lot of that has to do with uh, people's habits. Um, people are resistant to change. Um, and just sort of entropy. Um, you know, it's, it's like the waves washing on the ocean. It's always on the way out, always on the way out. So you have to be disciplined and continue the practice. Um, and there's, and that, that alone won't do it. So what are some other reasons that implementations fail? Um, people still have implicit expectations. Um, we talk a lot about uh, making everything explicit in Holacracy, that everything's written down, here's what you can expect of me, you have no right to expect it if it's not documented or if I have no accountability or if I haven't made that agreement. Um, and uh, if you don't write, if you don't have explicit agreements, um, there's a good chance that things will start to suffer. So kind of as a corollary to that, um, there was uh, no no working agreements that have actually been made. That can mean that the power of the ratifier never actually ratified the constitution. No one actually signed it, or that just the declaration that we're doing this thing was very vague. So be specific up front before you start, and that doesn't have to mean signing the whole constitution. But what it what I, th what I think it does mean is create working agreements and. A working agreement is a new concept that's coming in the in version five of, of the uh, constitution. I think it's a big step forward. And these don't have to be a big deal. Working agreements can be lightweight. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about them now, but I would want anybody who's doing an implementation to at least have a basic working agreement available that people can either agree to or not agree to. And if they agree to it, they can remove their, agree uh, their agreement at any time. But at least now we have a bedrock we have a foundation on which to build all of the all of the other rules and expectations. Um, I think it's really really important that there be there be you build from a base of strength, and that is having working agreements. Um, another reason that implementations can fail is because the coaches are out of touch with the um, with the actual practitioners. And I've seen this happen um, in cases where, you know, the coaches go in, they work with a couple a couple circles, they train a couple people up, and the training is just not enough for people who are expected to be, um, if someone's expected to do um, uh, facilitation, and they get like an hour of training or a day's training, and they, they're expected to just be able to facilitate the meetings, especially governance meetings. No, it is, it is a delicate thing. And you're dealing with power, so that's really a really really important place um, to have skilled facilitators. Um, but that's a little bit that's a little bit different than coaches being out of touch. So the people working with you, um, they may be working with a few circles and training those circles to train other circles. Though, and then really anyone outside of those people that get trained are probably not going to be as on board as they could. So um, if I were doing uh, work with someone, I would want to do surveys periodically, let's say at two months, four months, six months, and a year um, of checking in with not just the power holders or the main people interested in it, but, but like anybody who's expected to do this holacracy stuff, I would want to know how's it going. Um, so that's something I would recommend building in is some sort of, um, some sort of survey or follow up or way to check the health of the implementation throughout its throughout the course of its life. Um, and then another thing, another reason people stop practicing, people just don't see the value. Um, and if you've got a group of people who are expected to do something and there's no, there's no explicit agreement around it, um, if people have to, um, you know, change their processes or go to these meetings and they don't see the value, um, that's a problem. So uh, what I would propose as a way to mitigate that is to start slow, start with small rollouts and 
acclimate people to the changes over time. I think this will increase adoption. Um, and also, when you, inc when you learn, I mean, it's just how people learn. Learning incrementally is a great way to learn. So let's, let's start with tactical meetings. Let's add roles and accountabilities. Oh, let's add, um, you know, let's, let's sh shift from having one role that does our, our governance to um, letting each circle determine their governments with one role. Now let's shift to actual governance meetings or however it goes, but choose the right amount of engagement that will make it sustainable. A little bit of um, distributed management working well is better than full-on holacracy failing, in my opinion. So basically, that's it. I just wanted to um, kind of get these ideas out of my head while I still had them in there. And um, that's all. Thanks.